Hey, it's Terry with Something Spooky, and this is my spoiled video discussion for Halloween Kills. So, as the title suggests, we're going to be getting into complete spoilers for Halloween Kills. If you don't want that, this is your last chance. You can read my non-spoiled, kind of more organized thoughts in my review on the page. That is my official review. This is just going to be a kind of loose discussion about points in the movie, and of course, we will be getting into full spoilers. So overall, I did really like Halloween Kills, but I was disappointed in it as well. Maybe my expectations were a little too high. I really liked the previous movie, 2018's Halloween. I had high, high hopes for this one. And while it was good and arguably one of the better Halloween movies still, I don't think it lived up to that 2018 movie. And I didn't think it was really that special uh, compared to a lot of other modern slashers. One of the biggest problems is that it really feels like that middle part of a modern trilogy where just... Nothing really matters, nothing really happens, it kind of feels like filler. I actually thought a few times of The Hobbit 2, the second Hobbit movie in the Hobbit trilogy, where things are just kind of being prolonged and invented uh, almost for the sake of it. And, you know, I know that horror movies, slasher movies especially, don't need this, like, great complex plot, but Halloween Kills really sets a lot of stuff up uh, that goes nowhere, and that's kind of a problem. Also, I just didn't find it as visually striking as the first movie. The first movie, I thought, had a great look to it. Um, it did a really good job of kind of capturing the feel of Carpenter's original with some, like, really cool tracking shots and some really atmospheric uh, things, but also feeling like a modern, brutal slasher and being creative. This one just kind of felt straight up and standard. I mean, it still looked good. A lot of that is based on the mask, which looked terrific. But overall, I just didn't think it really had the visual identity that the previous film does or certainly that the original uh, film from 78 does. Still, like I said, it is one of the better Halloween movies. I don't want to be too hard on it, because I did like it. It's just a matter of those expectations. So to get into direct spoilers now, one of the biggest problems for me, uh, and it's something that's kind of emblematic of the whole movie, is the Tommy Doyle storyline. So Tommy Doyle, the little kid from the original movie, who Laurie is babysitting in the original movie, is a major part of this movie. And long story short, he kind of leads a community mob against Michael Myers. It's an okay idea, and I was kind of happy to have Tommy there for a while as something to latch on to um, that you are familiar with, but it doesn't really work all that well. It kind of just feels pointless. It doesn't go anywhere. And, you know, at the very end, Tommy dies. So it really is pointless. And it kind of leads to this whole storyline about, like, the community turning on, on things and how Michael you know, as part of Halloween now, it's almost like this Joker-like feel where he's inspiring people to do these bad things. I guess that was the point of all of it, but I mean, it doesn't really add up to much over the course of an hour and a half or whatever. It's kind of just Tommy Doyle running around, trying to get people riled up. They lose and die, and that's basically the whole movie. That, that ends the movie. One of the problems, one of my big questions was, where is Jamie Lee Curtis? I was really surprised how little she was in this. She's basically in a hospital bed literally the whole time. I mean, she's like transported there in the beginning. She's there most of the movie. There's like one or two scenes where she's like trying to leave and then she ends up hurt and ends up right back in the hospital bed and like basically doesn't do anything. The whole movie, which, you know, that was such a big part of the first movie was her and Michael showing, uh, showing off. And like, that's of course going to be the big showdown in the next movie. That's what they're building to. But they just didn't really do anything to like up the ante here or, or like make that more engaging. There's just a lot of dead ends, and so you have these kind of sideline subplot stories started with these other characters who show up like in this movie, and then they just die, and it's over, and it just doesn't really go anywhere. Basically, the whole premise of the movie was that Michael was just trying to return home, and that's kind of what we learn about him through all of this, is that he's fixated on the Myers house, which, by the way, it's really cool to have the Myers house back involved, and those are some of my favorite scenes in this movie. They're kind of creepy, and you have that nice nostalgic reference of the Myers house, but that's basically the whole of the plot. Another example of this kind of subplotting dead end is the uh, other convict who was released on the bus that Michael crashed in. And so like there's like the subplot in this movie where he's escaped and people are mistaking him for Michael Myers and the angry mob ends up following him and he jumps to his death and kills himself and it's sad and it's supposed to kind of be this reflection I guess on like mob mentality and how people go crazy um, but it just was kind of pointless and didn't really do anything and, and really didn't have any meaning to the story other than this message that I guess they were trying to get across but it doesn't really advance the plot at all it's not that interesting it takes away from Michael and Jamie Lee Curtis and just like what was the point so I do want to get into some good things about it I don't want to just bag on it the whole time because I did like it so good thing uh, mask is maybe the best Michael Myers mask in my opinion I love it it's got the uh 
kind of burnt look to it. It's very like gritty and, and grimy. I really like it. It looks terrific. It really makes a lot of scenes where like, you know, he's just in the shadows or being cast, you know, like light on him by fire. And like that mask is the star of the show. It's really making those scenes. The kills are really good. There's been a lot of praise online for the kills and rightfully so. There are some really cool gnarly kills. It doesn't go too far where it doesn't feel like, you know, true to the franchise. And they still feel like classic slasher kills, but they are well done and they're brutal and there are a lot of them. There's a huge body count in this movie. So like if you are just in for a kind of traditional slasher, you get that delivered scene after scene because it's basically all that's happening in the movie. I mentioned that I like the Myers house. There is a, that's one of the better subplots, I think. It works just as a creepy Michael Myers is outside your house kind of coming in. And so it's cool to get back to that location, see it all renovated for like the modern age. And there are a lot of cool references for fans throughout. One of the ones that uh, immediately struck me and I think I maybe had heard about and I still remember is uh, ha the Halloween 3 reference when there's the bodies posed on the playground. They're all wearing the masks from Halloween 3, the pumpkin and witch and skeleton. And there are other little things like that through the movie. Of course, the returning characters like Tommy and Lonnie. There's a lot of fan service for the franchise. That actually leads into something that's a bit of a mixed bag for me, which is the flashbacks. There are straight flashback scenes to 1978 that are taking place immediately after the original movie, um, but ignoring Halloween too. So it's kind of just picking up right after that first movie. And like, it's a cool idea and they do a decent job with it. I think it looks pretty good. It's cool to see Michael and like his classic look and there's kind of a 70s feel to the the way the footage looks and everything. It's okay but it also just kind of disrupts the movie and you're jumping around through time and you're not really invested in any of the characters so it just kind of sways things back and forth in a weird way but it was an interesting idea. Overall, I did like Halloween Kills. I enjoyed it. I knew that it was, you know, a Halloween slasher movie. A lot of people like to defend it like that. I think you can still enjoy it in that way. I just do think it is a step down from the previous movie. Don't think it lives up to the original movie, of course, but when you compare it to a lot of the movies in the franchise, including arguably the Rob Zombie movies, which is a uh, comparison people like to make, I would probably still take it above the Rob Zombie movies myself. So there are good things there. Don't want to be too harsh on it, but it was a bit of a letdown for me. I am still very much looking forward to Halloween Ends next year, and I feel like that's probably going to hopefully pick the ball back up a little bit. We'll get back to the Michael and Jamie and Lori uh, showdown, and I kind of feel like this one was just biding time until then. So I am very excited for Halloween Ends next year. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I already have a video exactly like this for Malignant on the page where I go into full Malignant spoilers in a video like this. You can check that out. Also, I have a ton of new reviews coming up, reviews for new horror movies. Some will be coming out this week, including Till Death, the new movie with Megan Fox, VHS 94, uh, Spiral, the new movie in the Saw franchise, Paranormal Activity movie at the end of the month. All of this is leading towards my horror movie of the year list, which I'll release on Halloween day. I'm going to compare all the movies that I've seen this year. I watch a lot of them this time of year. And if I need to update that list at the end of the year, I will. But all of these big movies I just talked about, plus reviews I already have on the page for Malignant and Candyman and others, I'll be having a horror movie of the year list on Halloween day. I hope you look forward to it. Check out the page for more reviews and a lot more spooky content. Thanks.